it's the war hipster here coming at you with another contrast plus painting tutorial and today we are painting a shining spears x arc only this time we're going sort of off box art instead what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a classic shining spears x arc but using the new color palette so this is going to be a blue body with a white helmet and well the rest of it's going to be the same as the typical shining spears that you see on the box art now You'll be able to use all of the techniques in this video to be able to paint your own shining spears just like this and well they look fantastic already the only other difference is that the um uh the trail on the back of the helmet that's going to be green because this is a commission piece and the commissioner has asked to have bale tan references on the models another point of interest is that this exarch has been magnetized so we have both the shuriken cannon and the twin shuriken catapult like so we also have the sword and we have the star slash laser lance as well so that's why he doesn't currently have arms or guns on him <laughs> And that's okay, because the first place we're going to start, and I know it pains me to do this straight away, but the first place we are going to start is with the freehand markings on the nose. And this is because this really does give us an area to work around for our X-Arc and for the rest of our Shining Spears, and it's the real focal point of the model. The rest of it is fairly simple, it's just this bit's quite te tetchy, and if we do this last, we actually make things more difficult for ourselves. So, with all that in mind, this model has been primed in grey sear and well the colour we're going to be using for the freehand first is Thousand Suns Blue. Now I'm using a Artist Opus Series M size zero brush for this because well whilst we want some precision right now we don't need this to be so thin that it's going to make our life a living hell. <laughs> so the Exarch has a slightly different marking to the rest of them as well and that's why I thought it'd be interesting to do with the do the X arc first. Now, it's quite tr tr tricky, tricky this because we, the top down view is really the easiest place to do this from in terms of being able to see where you need to put your markings. And well, the first thing that we do with the X arc is we draw a line going from around about the middle, going diagonally down like this. like so. And we've got it thinned down just a little bit more than we normally would on the palette as well, just to make this a little bit easier to improve the flow. And then what we're gonna do is on the opposite side, again, looking at the top down view, we're gonna draw another line to create a sort of chevron. Like so. Now I'm gonna wash the brush. Then going back to my Thousand Suns Blue on my palette. I'm now going to widen out this to make a nice straight chevron. It's at this point where you can kind of rotate the model around for comfort and ease. Like so. And same again on the other side. Like that. And don't worry if the lines are a bit, a little bit wonky. We're going to be able to solve them a little bit later. This is why we do this first. The next thing that we do is we're going to do a lever gap, and then we're going to do basically exactly the same thing again. And then we're going to block in the nose. Of our bike. 
like so. Moving on. Now this is where we come to, again, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but stay with me. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start doing those kind of lightning bolts. So now we're gonna draw first, around about halfway, we're gonna draw a line going like that, and then perpendicular to that, I'm gonna draw another line, like that. Wash the brush, grab a little bit more Thousand Suns Blue, and now we wanna do that sort of lightning bolt. So the way to do this is the easiest way I've found to do this, is to start by drawing a little line going across like this, then drawing another line going across like that, Then drawing another line there. And then drawing another line there like that. So as you can see, we've got that lightning bolt drawn in there. And then what we need to do is draw a diagonal line from each of those corner points. Going along like that. So you can see, we've sketched out that lightning bolt design. Wash the brush and then come round. Because what we're gonna do, is we're gonna do the same thing again, but on the opposite side. Leaving a little gap Like so, and then just check it from that top down view, make sure it's all good, looks all good to me. And then we're gonna draw the next line. Like so, and then Unfortunately, this bit being the hardest, you need to judge this by your eye. To make sure you've kind of got it at the right sort of symmetrical angle. We're just kind of matching up the two. It looks like we're all good there. But again, it's all right if it's not perfect because we can correct it a little bit later on. So we've done that line. And now we're gonna go along with this line. Like so. And as you can see, this one is a little bit longer. Goes a, a little bit more of a wider line, so. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come down here that feels more, more accurate to me So from here, what we're going to need to do is just do that to make sure it's right. Now again, as I say, don't worry if you've scuffed your lines a little bit. This is why we do this first. And then similarly, we need to do this side's little triangle as well.
like that. So now all that's left to do is to block in all of those lines and then do a second coat just to make sure that it's all nice and bold. So with that done, I've done the second layer. As you can see, our freehand looks pretty nice. It's it, There's mistakes, but that's okay because we're gonna correct those later. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some apothecary white and we're gonna do a recess shade on, we're just sticking to the canopy of the jet pike at the moment. We'll do this in a second section because it's just a little bit easier to focus on that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our small layer brush and we're gonna take some apothecary white. And we're basically just going to very carefully apply this to all of the recesses. So we've got the little vents just here. Now you could do the rest of the miniature like at this time, point if you wanted to, but just for the sake of this video, we're just gonna take it very steady here. So we're doing that, like that. And coming around there like that. Now, ultimately, you don't really have to worry about being 100% neat here because we are going to be relayering over the top. But the neater, the better. It's good practice. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey and we're going to use this to paint in what are going to be the black details. So this is going to be this grill just here underneath. We're going to paint it into this area under that kind of under where the, the, the lance rests. And we're also going to paint it inside here. And the reason we're doing this now, as I'm sure you can probably tell, is that if we make any mistakes, when we come to do the same correction that we're going to be doing over here on the marking, it all happens at the same time. So we're going to take that basilicanum grey and we're going to start painting it over this section just like this. Now we are going to colour in this area as well. And if you want to, you can do this at the same time on the guns. If you haven't magnetised your Dire Avenger Exarch, then you'll have to do this at the same time as your guns, whereas I conveniently have. But of course, not everybody will have done. So do just bear that in mind. And it's very easy at this stage when you're doing this to splodge this on the guns underneath. So for example, if I pop this weapon on here like this, you'll see, for example, that, you know, that's, that's quite tetchy to get into. Now I have done the recess shading with the apothecary white on the weapons because it is part of the kind of front part of the jet bike. which again, if you have your jet bikes fully assembled, you would have already run into that. So do just bear that in mind at this stage. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for that basilicanum grey to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Achillean green. Now this is the closest colour to Thousand Suns Blue, but it's not identical. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint this Achillean green all over our bits that are going to be the same colour as the Pterodon Turquoise. Oh, not Pterodon Turquoise, Thousand Suns Blue. So this is going to be, basically on the jet bike, it's just going to include this little panel here. And on the normal Shining Spears, they also have a little panel here as well, which we're going to do with Achille in green. But don't worry if it looks a little strange because it's a slightly different colour. 
we are going to fix it later. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take that black Templar and we're going to paint this over the top of our Basilicanum Grey. So with that done, this is where we're at, as you can see. We haven't done the gold details yet. We'll do those a little bit later because now it is time for us to put our money where our mouth is. Similarly on the guns, actually, I've done this like that, just to bring them up. Because like I said earlier, it's all part of the same section. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using some thinned down Corax white. We're gonna be using a little bit thinner mixture than normal, so kind of, two or three parts of white water in there, rather than just a kind of little tiny bit of water. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this to now basically correct any of our mistakes, but also to fully relayer our canopy. And this is gonna be tricky and a little bit annoying, but it's absolutely worth it in the end. Now remember, it will take maybe two thin coats of this to get a perfect white finish, possibly even three. So just don't try and do it all at once, but just take your time, go around your highlight uh, freehand, making sure that you're just correcting any of the kind of blobs or anything. You wanna do this across the entire of the canopy Avoiding where we've done the apothecary white. Just like this sort of thing. And just take your time. That's all there is to it. So with that done, you should now have a beautifully white canopy beautifully white guns and what we're going to do now is we're going to make that little top panel there the same color as this by taking some thousand suns blue and we're going to thin it down a little bit more than we would normally it's like three or four parts water so we're creating more of a glaze to go over the top of the circadian green and then what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over the top of the flat areas on the panel like this just avoiding the recesses around the design just there like this so effectively what we've done here with the Akiri in green is we've done the shading first and then followed it up with the relay like that see it's already looking spot on so with that done our front part of the jet bike is now, well, it's pretty much finished. The only thing left to do is the metallics and that will be on the room here and also on this little lance holder, cup holder type thing. But for now, what we're gonna do is gonna move on to the rest of the model. Now the color we're gonna be using is Apothecary White. And once again, we're going to be doing a recess shade. So for example, just here, we're just gonna start picking out the darker, recessed areas of the bike and on our gentleman himself. Now, if we were painting a regular dude, we would just go all over. It's not a problem, but because we're painting an Exarch and we're painting him in that classic style, we're only gonna do this on a couple of places. So for example, just there on the little 
chevron things on the legs. And we're also going to be doing white on this kind of gauntlet. Just here, like this. Like I said, I'm just going all over. Don't need to recess. Shade it here. Like so. And then similarly, on his pauldron, outer helmet it's basically a color swap And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Achillean green. And we're going to use this over the rest of his armor. So, for example, just going to start down here and make work our way up the model. Now we're going to be doing the same thing that we did on the panel on the jet bike. So don't worry too much if you do get a couple of little dark blobs, that's okay. We will of course be correcting it and again should you happen to accidentally get some of this on the white part of the jet bike that's okay too because we will be correcting it just like we did on the canopy with some corax white but now we just want to get this all over So with that done, we are now once again going to colour in some of the black details and the colour we're going to be using once again is Basilicarnum Grey. Now this is going to include areas like the exhaust grille just underneath here, the seat upon which our shining spear is sat, the, I guess, throttle that he's holding in his left hand, the Feet rests, and the, well, I guess the, the shaft of the spear. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some black Templar and we're going to colour in over the top of all of those details that we've just painted with the, the Silicon Grey. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some orc flesh and we're going to use this to paint in all of our trails, excluding this one around his arm. That one is going to remain white because it is a collar swap. So we're just going to get this orc flesh all over these areas. And as mentioned before, this is because the customer wishes for those bailed hand references.
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thins down Retributorama and we're going to use this to paint in all of the gold details. Now the Shining Spears generally don't have very many, but the Exarch does have the most. So what he has here is the little gems on his gauntlets. Just here, like that. He's got the one on his chest, and they all have one on their chest. Little spirit stone. He has this one on his forehead. And there's the room on the jet bike as well. And then there's the little holder And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some ethermatic blue. I'm going to paint this over his little computer screen right in there. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thins down iron hand steel. I'm going to apply this to the engine jet. Just here, like this. Now typically on your other shining spears, you would also apply this to the tip of the laser lance. However, this guy has a star lance. So it's a little bit different. Now you could also, if you wanted to, apply this to the sword blade. However, once again, our client has asked to replicate the Bailtan purple powered sword blade. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. All the techniques in this one. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this to our soft wraps on our weapons. And we're also going to apply this to the eye slots on his helmet. Over the top of the Achillean Green, that's okay. On the helmet, that is. We just want to give it kind of like a red tinting before we do a highlight later on. Yes, I know this is <laughs> pretty dodgy using a Stanley knife blade. I would not recommend this. So with that done, most of our base coats are actually on. In fact, nearly all of our base coats are on. The only thing left to do is the tip of the energy weapons. Now, as mentioned, we are going to be doing that kind of purpley weapon effect that Bailtown are famous for. So we're going to be doing this on both the spear and the sword before we do the shading and then the inevitable final highlights. So the color we're going to be making first is a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Magos purple mix. And what we're going to do is just going to load up our brush here. And I'm going to try and paint this on in basically one fell swoop, particularly along the blade. So we're just going to start down here and we can go over the purple, the gold at this point. That's okay. What we're looking to do is basically tint the weapon this Magos purple colour. As you can see, it's very subtle. Magos purple does thin down quite a lot and quite quickly. 
that's why we've only gone for a two to one. So we're just gonna make sure that we've got a nice color on there, like that sort of thing. Just there, like that. We're just gonna flip it over. like that. I'm just going to make sure that we've got this flat edge of the blade as well. I'm not looking for any dark build-ups here. Let's just absorb any of the darkest parts with your brush by just moving it around the model and lifting it off like so. I'm just going to check this side as well. There we go. I'm reasonably happy with that. Similarly on the crystal up here, we're just going to layer it on, so with that done, our crystal at the end of our spear <laughs> is already done, it looks awesome, it looks fantastic, just, it just needs that, however on the sword things are slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Magos Purple just on its own. And we're going to apply this to the kind of curve of the sword here and then to the base of the sword just there. But we're going to do a little bit of blending. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this Magos Purple neat straight out of the pot over the kind of that tip of the sword bit just there, like that. We're going to wash the brush and then with a clean brush, we're just going to smooth out the transition ever so slightly, just there. Same again, we're going to do it on this side, coming up to around about halfway, wash the brush and then just smooth it out like that. It's a very slender blade. For this kind of work but it'll look pretty cool in just a minute. So with that done you should have a blade that looks somewhat like this so what we're going to do is going to one more time go to Magos Purple on its own and this is just to stick towards the tip of the blade because again this is quite a small form factor blade. I'm just going to once again just add that like that. And I'm going to wash the brush then we're just going to smooth out our transition just by lifting off some of that excess and just moving it along just a little bit like that. And so with that done, just to really finish off the blade, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Corax white and we're going to use this to highlight every sharp edge on the blade. So this is going to include kind of, well, it's not a sharp edge, but it's a hard edge. The back of the blade. Like that. And of course, we've got the cutting edge as well. So with that done, our purple power weapons are finished. So what we're going to do now is going to apply some shades. Now the first one we're going to apply is Grip Charger Grey. And we're applying this to all of our silver. So this one detail on the X arc. However, as mentioned before, if you're on your normal shining spears, you'll be applying this to the tip 
of the laser lance. And so with that Griff Charger Grey applied, we're then going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm going to use this to shade all of our gold details. So with that done, our Exarch is now at what I would call War Hipster Battle Ready. So that means it's now time to take him to the next level. So the place we're going to start is with Corax White. We're going to be using this all over all of our remaining white details. So just like we did on the jet bike itself, we're just going to pick a place to start. We're just going to be using this to relayer all of these details back up to a nice, brilliant white. So with that done, you should have a Shining Spear Exarch that looks somewhat like this. Now, before we do any highlights on that white, what we're gonna do is, just because it gets another big task out of the way, is we're gonna relayer all of that armor with the Thousand Suns Blue, just like we did before on the jet bike itself. And this is just because this is a second kind of arduous task, as it were. And it just makes sense to and get all of these things out of the way so that he's looking even more complete rather than doing all of those white highlights just yet. So we do this. Just once again, like before, avoiding anywhere. Where the Achillean green has really settled. And as you can see, it's just brightening it right up and really enriching that colour and just bringing it in line with the rest of the model. So with that done, it is now time to add some highlights. So as you can see, I've put the lance on here because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking some moot green and we're using this to highlight all of our green banners. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Dawnstone. I'm gonna use this to highlight our black details. So that Dawnstone applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thin down iron hand steel and we're going to use this to relayer our silver. I want this to just be nice and bright with that hint of shading in the darkest recesses. Just like that. And so with that done, we're now going to take some thinned down Canoptic alloy. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our gold details.
So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down Aram and Blue. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our Thousand Suns blue areas. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of our white details using some thinned down white scar. So just take your time here because this is going to take a little while. Just like this. So with that done, our shining spear is nearly finished. We've just got two things left to do, and this is all of the gems scattered around his armor and his eye lenses. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some shyish purple, because again, Bale Tan references, and we're gonna paint this over the top of all of our gems. So with that done, what we then do is we take a tiny amount of Fire Dragon Bright and we're going to apply this as a little line. Across each of our eye lenses, just like that. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Cacophony Purple and we're going to use that to highlight the gems. And so just to finish that off, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny dot of white scar. I'm going to put that at the top of each of our gems. And so with all of those gems complete, our shining spears are now finished. And as you can see, they look absolutely marvelous all together as a group. Now, as I said at the top of the video, you can use the techniques explored in this one on the Exarch to paint in the rest of your Shining Spears. And well, this is just the example here of what they look like in their glory on the box art. Essentially, the only difference here really is the color swap on the armor and the helmet. Now, I hope you found this useful. I really enjoyed doing it. White is always a challenge in that freehand. Oh, very lovely, very nice. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.